Major support for these broadcasts is provided by New York Community Bank, Chase Commercial Term Lending, Chelsea Lighting, Capital One Bank, Perfect Building Maintenance, Genova Burns, Gian Tomasi and Webster, Kilroy Architectural Windows, New York's Window Company, The Wickhoff Group, Greenberg Traurig, LLP, m and Bank. Additional support is provided by Ackman Ziff Real Estate Group, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Briarwood Organization, Bruce Mosler, C.B. Richard Ellis, Colliers International, New York, LLC, Cushman and Wakefield, Dime Savings Bank of Williamsburg, Douglaston Development, Levine Builders, DDG Partners, Friedman LLP, Accountants and Advisors, Flushing Bank, Investors Bank, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Center at Syracuse University, James Orfanides, Centurion Holdings, John Katsimatidis, Red Apple Group, Madison Realty Capital, Margolin Weiner and Evans, LLP, Certified Public Accountants and Business Advisors, Massey Knackle Realty Services, New Banks, Meridian Capital Group, Newmark Knight Frank, Sterling and Sterling, SJP Properties, Stonehenge Partners, and These Friends. New York City is truly the event capital of the world. It's the world. Every major event, every party, every world events, forget California, forget London, it's New York City. It's the Big Apple. And today I have the man who runs and delve, develops all of these events, Arthur Bacall, Bacall Hospitality and State-of-the-Art Enterprises. Thanks for being here. Great being here, Michael. Thank you for having me. So, Arthur, let's talk a little bit. You know, let, let's go back a couple of generations because we were talking that your dad and his his father started a company in the ribbon business. Tell me about your grandparents first. Yeah, well, Franklin Ribbon and Carbon. It was a uh, it was a great business. It was a thriving business. I, I think I think at the time when it probably closed up, it was over seventy five years old. But uh, my grandfather on my dad's side started it, and my dad, of course, that was his, you know, primary business. Tell me a, a little bit about your parents. Uh, your uh, your dad ran the ribbon business, right? And your mother was a lawyer who subsequently became a judge, right? Correct. Yeah, she was an attorney when uh, there wasn't as many female attorneys. Now it's you know much more commonplace. Uh, but back then, you know, she was uh, she was one of the leaders and one of the uh, pioneers. Really. How they meet? Um, I, I think it was on a, a, a mutually a set-up date between friends, you know, but uh, when it came to my parents, when it came to all their personal things before, I, I, I found out more later in life than I knew back growing up. They just, uh, it was all about just, you know, you know, they wanted us to be well taken care of, but at the same time... Uh, now, you were born in, I think you said Doctors Hospital? I uh, know uh, New York Hospital. New York Hospital, in Manhattan. And you, you were, your parents were living in Brooklyn at that yes, time. Yes. Yes. So and in my early years, you know, I was a Brooklyn boy. And then you uh, moved out to Long Island. To Long Island. Yeah. Now, one thing you said to me, you know, is that your you, your mother and father liked parties. I mean, they liked yes. these events. <laughs> they liked being social. And this was something, you know, growing up as a kid, you, you learned about these events. You, you saw, and you said to me that your dad, since he was really a salesman, entrepreneur with the ribbon cutter. I mean, and to to the level that he had to correct the type. I mean, this yes. is, you know, it's it's interesting. I was looking to buy a typewriter. I, my wife says, why do you want a typewriter? I said, because they're nice. You know, it's easier for, uh, but, you know, correct the type was the big thing because with all the errors I made, you know, you always need to correct the type. Now, it's really interesting now going back to because we're in such a computer age. We have now been for, you know, so many years. But, you know, back then, growing up as a kid, 
you know, I'd be working in the factories helping spool rimids and, uh, and finding these products that would be packaged, you know, these correct type products. That was one of the, you know, that, a leading product back then. So it's, uh, we've, we've come a, a long way. So you, you were saying to me that besides, you, you know, your mother and father were party animals, as we could <laughs> a lot of ways. No, 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 Some people say I am, too. Right, so right, I guess right, it's yeah. in the... It definitely <laughs> is, is followed the tradition. But w what's interesting is that you, at a young age, your father would take out customers, and he would take you to some of the finest restaurants. I mean, you were at the 21 Club, Lutez. Tell me a little bit about it's, uh, it's really exciting. I mean, that's why when people say, how do you, how'd you get into this business, you know, uh, with my parents being in such different professions. Uh, yeah, he was, uh, you know, really a big part of his role, even as president of the company, was selling, was getting the, the customers, you know, dealing with the suppliers and the vendors. So he would really like to go to nice places. My dad really never, uh, you know, never went, you know, on the cheap when it came to that. So he really liked going to some fine places. Thank God for the tax law at that time. <laughs> yeah, that, back then that was 100% entertainment. Much better. Oh, well, he entertained a lot. Right. But he really, you know, I was a pretty uh, mature kid growing up, so I, I liked those, even though I was fun-loving. I liked going to these great restaurants, you know, getting my tie on and my suit at like 10 years old, you know, 9 years old. And we used to make those, you know, trips into the... the uh, early maitre d'ing, you know, the, um, you, you were the 11-year-old the catering manager over there. Yep. Now, so your parents moved out to Long Island. Yes. You, you went to public school, high school, and junior high school. And, yeah, uh, Jericho High School. Jericho High School. Yeah, great school. And what do you do during the summers? Work at the... the yeah, I worked college? at different places. I mean, early in the years, uh, I would work at, mostly in my father's business at that point. Uh, you know, I would work in different areas more. I, actually, as much as I love people and I love everything, you know, on the front, I would I would do a lot of the factory work because it was. I just got to know a lot of the uh, the employees, the workers, and um, and it was it was a lot of fun through the years. So you, you you're graduating high school. How did you decide that you wanted to get involved with the hospitality industry? Because you, there were a couple of good programs. You went to Michigan State who had a hospitality program. There was the Cornell program, you know, and then there was another program, uh, uh, the third one. Well, you have Denver, you had uh, Nevada, Las Vegas. Some of these schools now have become even bigger in that program. I mean, hospitality back then, as much as it's been a big business for a long time, it wasn't as uh, as much of a, of a, of a college. So, so how did you decide to go to Lansing, Michigan? You know, I, I mean, know, it seems you know, like... My, <laughs> you know, I could understand Ann Arbor, you know, that yeah. was more, but Lansing was not a place. No, it's definitely like a, a break from, you know, all the exposure I had with, you know, both a lot of the entertainment and everything in the city and growing up in New York. Uh, and it was a good change. It was really a nice uh, change of pace. It really allowed me to see a different part of the country, uh, get away from just the, 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 the set group that I've always been, you know, dealing with. And it was just a very uh, dynamic up and coming program. So I made a decision to, to go out there and specialize in this. But I was introduced to not only in uh, with my, my dad going to these restaurants and really having a love for food. Uh, my mom, uh, being an attorney, she really had a great clientele, both that became our friends and part of our family. And there was an attorney, a uh, really uh, well-respected attorney that uh, really talked about cooking schools when I was like maybe 14, 15. Who was it? Uh, Leon Hirschbaum was his name. I think it was with Paula Dwyer, a big firm. And But he really, um, I look back actually after we were talking the other day and I, I looked at uh, one of the books that he, he signed to me like to keep cooking. It was a Four Seasons cookbook from the time of, you know, it was, I think it was in, written uh, by James like, Beard. Now, are you like my friend Drew who has no idea how to cook? I mean, <laughs> it, it, well, oh, no, I could cook, but oh. yeah, but I'm a little, I, I, I love Drew. He's a good friend and uh, very, I respect but, but him not, so but much. But not a cook. But, but yeah, I don't think you want to throw me right in the kitchen, like, uh, you know, even though I could pretty much handle most aspects of a job uh, that needs to be done for an event, um, I could cook well at home, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. Now, during the four years, what did you do during the summers or when you were uh, I worked. Then I was, well, once I started really uh, selecting that I was going to go for a profession. I mean, maybe more so now people have an idea or kids have an idea. Maybe they don't. But back then, you not everybody knew the profession they wanted to, you know, try to go for. So the fact that in 12th grade I applied to a school and I was going to really be uh, specializing in a, in a field, you know, what that field would lead to is a whole other story. But, um, you know, in the summers, I, I, you needed work experience. You needed that as part of your, uh, you know, graduating. You know, you had to get credits and so all that. Did you uh, work out there or you worked in New York? No, I worked mostly in New York. I liked coming back to New York. So who so were you most, working for? Yeah, I worked with different, like, country clubs, different restaurants. You know, none of the big names, but just to get some experience. I worked in some smaller hotels. Uh, even, like, uh, out in Long Island, I remember working at the front desk at a Holiday Inn out there just to get experience, you know? It's something that I haven't even been remotely close to that kind of a hotel uh, after I've graduated, but at the same time, it was experience. So you graduate, and um, 
so you graduate and there were a couple of opportunities and you said to me one of your mother's friends was Lou Rudin I believe yes right? yes and, very dear friend and Lou had an op had knew everybody Lou Rudin yeah. you know he was very involved with the Association for Better New York and Lou was New York City like yes. he, he really cared about New York and the resurrection you know in the, in the 70s and the 80s uh, situation and and Lou introduces you to somebody who they said was a tough person to work for in the hospitality industry the late Leona Hemsley mm -hmm. and you get a job I mean the Hemsleys had a variety of hotels but they had two hotels that you would say were four and a half stars not five stars where you are today on a five star they had the Hemsley Palace and they had the Park Lane so tell me about the first job well, it's interesting, just to give you a really quick story, is with Leona Helmsley, I happened to be dining with um, my mom uh, while I was in college, probably the year or so before, uh, with a great friend of ours, a doctor that we were close with, and we were at Le Cirque, the old Le Cirque, the first one. And Leona Helmsley happened to be sitting, like, right next to us. I mean, the tables, you couldn't, they were closer than almost that we're sitting today. And um, she said something to me, and it was unrelated to what ended up happening, but I just believe in a lot of things about timing and everything I've done in my career in life is about fate and timing. She, we talked about what I was doing and that I was in the hotel program and I wanted to really come work to New York and it would be great. And she said, you should look me up. You should come work for me or whatever. So that was like an, an experience with her before I actually got the introduction to interview through the hotel and uh, through Lou Rudin. Um, you know, the Rudin family has been, you know, w was just great. And, you know, I, I miss him, you know, very much because he was a big part of that, that first introduction, you know, after that, you know, a lot of the things that I did. So what do you do with the Hemsley? Oh, uh, well, so it was like, so it was either was I got to get into like a whole food and beverage role or rooms, you know, hotels are very much divided into two areas. That's you know, right. You know, there, and there's yeah. a wall. There, 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 it really is. Like, it's, it's, it's like, it's like either you make your path, um, you might work in different areas throughout the hotel, but it's usually food and beverage or like the room side, you know, maybe sales and marketing, things like that. So um, I get a job. Here I am, 21 years old, you know, right out of, right out of college, starting at the Helmsley Palace, which back then was the hot hotel. It really was. I mean, they had some other chain hotels and other different, you know, types of hotels, but that one was really, you know, very luxurious. It was her main headquarters. It's where Leona kept her office. And I started working like in the tea room, the old gold room, the Madison room. It was like a lounge where, I mean, you'd have people like all the, the, the high profile, you know, Park Avenue, Fifth Avenue, you know, people coming after their shopping to have tea after before theater, uh, after theater, you know, having their drinks and, and dinner. And, and then we had a restaurant, you know, Harry's Restaurant, the Harry's Bar. Uh, actually, the restaurant back then was the Trianon. You know, it, had, it, 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 it really, I worked in all different areas. You know, they, you know, it was one of those almost like a, not a formal training program, but you happened to just get thrown into something. And, you know, when they needed you somewhere else, you went. It, and it was I was not just the like, Marriott training program. No, it, no. It, it was a training program. This was like a, learn by this was like boot camp. Boot camp. It was like, uh, it was pretty amazing. Like, because back then you had to be very, you know, at a young age, you had to be quick on your feet. You had to be a quick study of the situation, both with the clientele and the politics that go on in hotels to make sure that you. Uh, Next stop after the Hemsley. Well, what was good at the Helmsley just was I kept getting a lot of promotions because of uh, the reputation, you know, of, of being difficult. Uh, there was a lot of people that weren't keeping their job so quickly. So you both had to be good, and you also had to, uh, you know, see when the next job opportunity would come within the hotel. But after, um, a after Helmsley, I, I, I went and did a short stint at uh, the Essex House. Um, I happened to be, like, through my career, usually at the best, the newest, or whoever took over a hotel. Right, and at that time, uh, the Japanese. Yeah, they just over. were taking it over, uh, you know, Nico. So um, I got into a little bit more of an operational role, which really was actually maybe wasn't the most exciting or as fun as maybe some of my subsequent jobs, but at least it taught me about the storerooms, the back of the house. Um, and I was an assistant food and beverage manager. You know, I did everything from the wine purchasing, knowing, giving me a knowledge about, you know, the different basics of, of food and beverage and really running an operation. So I worked really hard. I worked a lot of long hours supporting the different, you know, outlets, both catering and the restaurants. And uh, I spent some time there, but I got to know some clientele. I got to know some of the really uh, important decision makers in, in the business. And then an opportunity came up at the Waldorf afterwards the fame wall yeah the fame wall i think at some was point Eric there at that time i uh, know he came in afterwards but we've we've remained you know close and we know each other well you know the gm there but um i got i got a job in the catering office you know uh, i had some catering experience from my uh 
uh, Helmsley but, Palace But as days. you said to me, you were the, like the, the kid on the low level. Oh, yeah. Okay, you, I was like uh, in the bullpen. You were in the bullpen. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Okay, we, we got this event in the third room over there. We'll send it to Arthur. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. I mean, you had to work your way up to do a ballroom event there. There was like a whole protocol, and there was a whole structure there. Like you had a, you know, you know you, it was like starting like from the Waldorf. Really? was like the White House. I mean, yeah. you know, the, it really was. You know, yeah. Everybody, you know, at that time, now they're renovating it. I mean, they should have years ago. With the amount of money they're putting yeah. into it, I mean, you can say all you want about it, but it just—it's a massive hotel, but it's also so there's so much history, and it was really exciting. So I, I got myself, you know, I just—I just was really—I'm just a, a very determined young guy at that point that really wanted to learn a lot, and I was really good with people, and they just kept giving me more responsibilities. And I, you know, the per person that was, you know, uh, the director at that time was very well known, uh, and uh, he took, I think, a real liking to me, saw that I was doing great work. And uh, then uh, one of probably a, a career changer or an accelerator happened when the Plaza Hotel was going through a whole change right. in so ownership. This is the early 90s when Donald then Actually, got, late 80s. Uh, late 80s, mm -hmm. uh, early 90s. He was losing it already. He was yeah, there. No, I was okay. there at the good time. You were there at the right time. Donald yeah. and uh, Ivanka decide they want to become the king and queen of uh, the hotels, and they yes. buy the Plaza Hotel. It really was interesting because with Leona Helmsley having all the the, uh, the PR about her being the queen, really when Donna and Ivana were together, like Ivana was the the new queen, you know, or and that's what the king and queen of the hotel, like you said, and uh, it was an exciting time. I mean, they really wanted to renovate it and 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 have it reborn and get that exciting, you know, new clientele, the fashion business that really hadn't been there because Ivana was very, you know, tied in with right a lot of the fashion time. houses. So it was really exciting and and. So what happened was they, they changed over the whole food and beverage and catering operation there. So they needed a, a whole team, like like from day to okay, night. So, like, so right now, okay, we've done the Hemsley, we've done the Essex House, uh, and now we're, we're at the Waldorf, and now we're at the Plaza. Yes. Next stop. Not bad, right? Not um, bad. Oh, well, I, I got mean, you got four, four stars, you okay? <laughs> I'm okay. Then okay. I'm moving up. Okay. No, so, uh, well, with, with the Plaza was really where I got to really meet some of the greatest like, clientele that I still remain friendly with, and I just got my name out there. Really, I became like the assistant director there, and I was just, but I was, I was always restless. I wanted to do more. I felt like I had it. Okay, I had this covered already. I kind of knew everything I needed to go there. What was the next stop? So um, I actually get a call from uh, the owners and the managers of the St. Regis that was going to open up. Right, IT and T uh, had been. IT and T, yeah, ran Ariscog. They were going through a massive renovation. It was going to be the hotel, and uh, so I met with some of the decision makers there. But unfortunately, at that time, they weren't really ready to make a commitment to bring somebody like myself on. It was just too early because in the world of renovations and constructions, it wasn't really opening Especially when they in New thought. York City, yes, right? it wasn't opening at the time that they thought it was going to open. So it was still a couple of years probably off. Uh, so at that point, I also get a call from uh, Joe Baum's group over at the at Rainbow, Rainbow Room. room yeah. At the Rainbow Room, another great place, non-hotel. I've always been with hotels. And uh, it, was, it was for a senior uh, position on the you know, catering and food and beverage team there. And uh, also, when it started coming to these offers, I had to evaluate where I wanted to be. And also, there was compensation situations. Yeah, and look, People the Rainbow Room, when, when Joe Baum was there, you know, you know, RA, Restaurant Associates, and everything else, the Rainbow Room was the place. Yes. You know, yes. especially 64th and 65th floor of Rock Center, you know, great views and everything. And, you know, as Tony May said to me on the show, you know, he brought back ballroom music to the Rainbow Room before you were there. So. Yes. Yeah, very much so. I mean, it really, is, it, it was something that is, is missed today, and hopefully there'll be, uh, you know, there'll be another uh, another time for the so Rainbow Room. So the Rainbow Room, and then you go back to the St. Regis. Yeah, well, I never got the job at the St. Regis because the job wasn't there to be had. So I was not even at the Rainbow Room a year when I get called back by the same group that was talking to me saying, you know what, Arthur, we think you're the right guy, we're ready. And this was going to be a position that was like no other position I had had before. It was going to be in charge of all the food and beverage and catering, you know, a four-star four star st type restaurant, you know, with an amazing accredited chef, uh, an amazing bar lounge, you know, King Cole Bar, famous place. Right, and, and also... Ballroom, the St. Regis the roof. Same, the roof of the St. Regis. Yeah. I mean, one all of legendary nice. before, but still, as good as it was, it wasn't going to be what it's now was going to become. They were putting... You know, back then even, you know, in 1990, $150 million, like a massive renovation. The rooms, the everything. And I was hired to be like really one of the key opening, you know, uh, you know, directors of, you know, the biggest part of the hotel in both, you know, not in terms, not only in terms of revenue, but exposure and visibility. So, you know, a lot of people were saying, God, you know, I'm only at that point 28 years old. Uh, I still have, you know, a lot of good years ahead of me, but this was like a, a big job to tackle. 
So uh, I was ready for it, though. I really was ready that I thought that this was, was going to be the job that you know, was going to make the difference. And, and then there's uh, this other hotel. I mean, it's like talking about the hotels in New York, a uh, hotel called the Pierre, right? Yeah, yeah. So I spent eight years at the St. Regis. I was really ready to probably almost go into my own business at that point. I said, you're either going to work for these great companies or you're going to try to take that whole entrepreneurial, you know, uh, jump. And then uh, the main position, the head of catering position at the Pierre, which probably some of the best of the greatest parties have taken place at that hotel, became open. The manager that was actually there. And at that time, it was owned by Four Seasons. Four Seasons, Izzy Sharp out of Canada. Yes, yes. Great man, got, got to spend a lot of time when I ended up uh, working over there. Uh, had a lot of visibility with him. But what was, uh, what was fun about this was you I, know, I was torn. You know, for a catering manager, you should be 650 pounds <laughs> by the, right there. I, 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 listen, it's not easy. I mean, definitely. You, you definitely eat at all times, all times of the day, and then right. nothing's regular in your schedule or your life. So how many years did you stay at the... I was about four and a half years there. So, uh, yeah, I took on this job. It was an amazing job in terms of, I mean, it was a, like a lifestyle because I probably met some of the greatest, you know, leaders of our city and, 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 and people that I've remained close friends with and I continue to so, do a lot so of business. then, with. you know, but it's the bug. We get the bug, you know, the call hospitality. You know, your father was an entrepreneur running a company. Your mother was, uh, had a, her own practice and then subsequently the judge. You want to go out on your own, right? Yeah. So what happens? Yeah, I mean, it was like a key time, and I, uh, you know, uh, you know, things. I just, I just was too restless to say I want to just do more than just run one operation. I mean, there wasn't. It didn't feel like there was enough for me. I mean, for a lot of people, there was, but I just had that bug that so, I had. So to, some uh, very interesting solve. people decided. You know, you had been on Central Park. You really wanted to get a little further up on <laughs> Central Park. You know, over there, and and you, there was this little property called at that time was going to be called uh, AOL Time Warner, and you know, the developers who happened to be uh, the Related Corp and Ari Apollo mm -hmm. decided that they were going to build a hotel. Re in reality, probably in New York City's true first five-star hotel, mm -hmm. the Mandarin, right? Yes. Well, definitely uh, something that had never been done before, both in terms of uh, creating and a building of that nature, you know, not really a standalone within a, a big complex, but also a, a company that was not really established as much in uh, North America, uh, but I mean, let they alone have, New York. had only about five hotels in North America. Right, this time. right. Yeah, probably even a little bit less now. They, they have more. And uh, very w we're very well known in Europe. And, uh, and so the they come East. to you? What happened? Yeah, no, I was approached. But it was funny because it was at a time when I was really committed no matter what before this whole Mandarin, you know, uh, contact was made with me. I was already committed. I started a company called State of the Art Enterprises, which is still thriving today. That was the first company that I started as, as being, you know, my own business. And I was ready to just, you know, start doing events everywhere, start helping develop spaces, manage, you know, spaces, do whatever it took to, you know, really uh, use my experience. So how, how long were you involved with the, uh, with, with the Mandarin before they opened? Well, what was great there, and which I think is a big part of the success, is, and it doesn't always happen, sometimes they bring key individuals like myself on almost too late in the game. Like a lot of the decisions are made, whether it's selecting the product, you know, the, the china, glassware, linens, just the whole tone of what you can set. Even the creation of the room. The creation I mean, of the room. I mean, so, the yeah. nice thing about the mansion is, as you've said to me, is, you know, it's 6,000 square feet, pillarless, no pillars, mm -hmm. beautiful glass over there. So, you know, yes. it's very the unique. Sixth floor of the big, big selling point. Overlooking Central yeah. Park. Yeah, no, it's it's fantastic. I mean, I still remain there, very active. You know, uh, on so a daily you, basis. you're there. You, the, the Mandarin opens up in 2000. 2003. So 2000. I was I was hired almost a year before. You know, I was brought on. You know, as a, a very unique you know, and your contract. your your contract. What type of you are? What? You're, well, I oversee. I function as the director of catering. But uh, I was doing a lot more at that point. I was getting involved in all aspects of the food and beverage. I was, it was just the general manager, director of sales and marketing, and myself, really, at the beginning. And then the team start coming. And it's, it's something that I got that, you know, uh, that, that really, that rush, like I had at the St. Regis, when you start hiring everybody. Right. Now, one of the interesting things is the first event. Talk to me about the opening event at the Mandarin. Well, the opening, like yeah. who it was for? <laughs> no, 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 no. That, that event with Billy Joel. I mean, oh my God, the, yeah. The main, the yeah. main event. Yeah, that was amazing. A, as Frank Sinatra would say, the main event. No, it was really, it was really, it was so unbelievable because uh, not only was I still now, while the Mandarin opening was happening, you know, both planning for everything, I was also uh, running my business, trying to do these private events, these corporate events, getting these other business relationships going. So trying to be an entrepreneur, but not get tied into the day in and day out of being, you know, uh, uh, almost 
functioning as an employee in a lot of ways. And uh, so I was balancing it well. But, you know, opening up a hotel of that nature and that magnitude just took a lot of a lot of time and effort. I mean, they days easily were 15, 16 right. hours. <clears throat> so planning then, and then the big opening party we got, uh, I had a relationship and another colleague of mine with Billy Joel's management, you know, just from uh, the past. So we worked out a deal to get him to perform like four songs and open up the hotel with, you know, the who's who of the city coming there and taking over both the lobby and the ballroom and setting up a, a night that was just memorable. But you know, you, as you say, you're always interested in doing more and then while you're at the Mandarin running the State Bond Enterprises, um, you have this opportunity with uh, Giuseppe Cipriani. Yeah. Yeah. What happens over there? Yeah, no, I used to spend a lot of time there uh, ha entertaining clients at uh, Harry Cipriani, and uh, we got to know each other. And then they were ready to make a big uh, expansion of their company. They made some changes within the personnel, and they approached me and uh, said, listen, we want you to run our whole hospitality division. You know, we created, you know, a whole position of being president of the whole group. So it was very exciting, but at the same time, my, my work wasn't done at the Mandarin. I mean, Mandarin was just really getting going. So I said, listen, I don't want to leave the Mandarin. I feel really tied into it. I love the, the, the company and the hotel. So they said, we don't want you to leave what there. We it? want you to do everything. You can, maybe you can get another ROM. <laughs> no, uh, another year to be on the <laughs> telephone, right. Uh, cloning, you know, we need to be cloned. Right. But, um, but it was great. So we ended up uh, forming a whole partnership there, which lasted a few years, but I still do work with them in terms of consulting and private events and things like that. But uh, it was a whirlwind few years because I had both my state-of-the-art business, the Mandarin, you know, operating and, and running that. Appella. And, Tell and me then, well, Appella's been great. Appella, Appella's my new, uh, my most recent project. It's about, you know, two plus years into it, and it's over yeah, in the Alexandria Center. October of 2010. 2010. We just, almost like a soft opening because it was just early on. It's really two full years right now. A very, and, a beautiful place, but a, a difficult place for people to find. Yeah, a little bit of a destination, you know, for some people. But I think we've, um, you know, I've been able to put in a, a very dynamic, exciting team over there. The aesthetics of the place, the building itself is so unique, and the service that we're offering. You know, we work um, with the Colicchio Group on the food and beverage, and uh, which offer a, a great, you know, great product uh, to our guests. And everybody's uh, been really excited about going there. It's a very unique space. I mean, so, and New York's hungry for new spaces. So, you know, when we were talking, so what would you say? If you had to categorize yourself, what are you? I mean, I, I think you're the guru of hospitality, but what, 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 is, what is your role today for a customer? Well, I, I keep trying to figure that out because okay. I do so much. I'm trying to get the clear message out there because I'm a little bit of everything for, for people. If they need their event planned, you know, I have that, you know, uh, that service. If they need their hotel venue or something run properly and managed, I'm that guy. And when I say I'm that guy, I'm backed up by a fantastic team. Right. You know, and, a great and, talented but, team. But I mean, you, you're putting together everything, okay? You know, it goes from the food to the... To, to the to, to the furniture to the event to the lighting to everything over there I mean hey I'm certain that in 2014 when we have uh, the Super Bowl here there'll be plenty of Arthur uh, Bacall events over there well, I'm, so, I'm already planning for that so there, there, there is no question yes. and then in addition you know since uh, some time you know, had so much spare time you got into the restaurant business right yeah. you were involved a with bit T bar with yes uh, with my uh, partner Tony Fortuna great restaurant Upper East Side has become one of the most you know uh, uh, reputable and and, and uh, well-regarded restaurants, you know, up there. So it's exciting. And then, since there's not enough time in the day, you decided to run a management contract with Savannah's, right? And yeah, we thing. did that for a few years. I mean, I don't know if we're going to do it again this year, but that was um, out in the Hamptons with a great group of people. Quickly, with uh, like 20 seconds left, tell me you're married and you have a couple of kids. I have, yeah, I have a great wife, Leanna, uh, and uh, we have three kids. You know, two older boys. That one's in college, one's uh, going to college soon, and then we have a beautiful daughter together, uh, Amanda, uh, who's uh, in first grade. So I'm, I'm really happy that I have the, the guru of what thrives and helps the businesses of New York, because hospitality is the business of New York. More people come here, 51 million people, and many of them from New York and around the world go to a Bacall event, and thanks for being here today. Thanks. Thanks for having me.